are only two ways to live your life. One is as if nothing is a miracle. The other is as if everything's a miracle. I'm Dean Hall. I'm a two-time cancer survivor and licensed clinical marriage and family therapist living here in Portland. My life was in ruins because everything was just a little too much. Uh, my entire life, I, all I'd ever wanted was a nice, loving family, uh, and I had that. And when my wife died, all of a sudden, I lost everything I was living for. The second time that the cancer came back, I really didn't have much will to live. Finally, in 2013, I was dying of leukemia. I had a beautiful 21-year-old daughter who just a couple years before had lost her mama and I thought she deserved better than that. So I decided I better find a way to come back to life and, and give it my best again. Uh, I was leafing through an old journal that I'd kept as a kid. And way before anybody ever thought of bucket lists, I had what I called a have to list. Things I just had to do before I was gonna die. And, one of the top things on that list was to swim the English Channel. So that's what I decided to do. And when I told my doctors, uh, they not only said no, they said, heck no. You get in a public pool and it could kill you because my immune system was so bad. Uh, but I told them, what do you want me to do? Die on the couch? I gotta do something. So I started asking myself, what would do the world a little bit of good? That even if I died trying, it would leave a wonderful legacy for my daughter and, and maybe do something uh, bigger than me, uh, a purpose beyond myself. And that's when I found out that nobody had ever swum the entire length of the Willamette River. I remember standing over the river in 1984 after a bicycle race that I'd come out for and looking at the Willamette and asking my dad, has anybody ever swum this whole thing? And he said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, just the fact that he said that um, kind of set the hook. And even back then, I thought that would be an amazing idea, but I quickly forgot about it. But it came back then at age 54. He invited me to a meeting, and it was a shock to me when uh, they pronounced that he was going to uh, swim the river to raise funds for cancer. And I thought, well, that's a good thing. And I was very supportive in that, but I thought that's an impossibility to swim from Eugene to the Columbia River. I, I was blown out of my mind that he would even think of something like that. He has always been a dreamer and thinking of impossible things to do in climbing or hiking or swimming. And I thought, well, I think I'll attach myself to him and see how far we can go in this dream. The fears were that little old fat guy getting in a kayak at Eugene, Oregon and paddling 174 miles back to the Columbia River, I had many fears because I could see myself upside down with just the boat showing and me not showing. And so there are a lot of fears, but uh, I thought if Dean wants to do it and he wants to put me at risk, so be it. Water has always been one of my best friends in the place I go to when I'm having the toughest time and the place I go to when I'm celebrating life the most. I was born only blocks from the Willamette. And the first four years of my life, uh, I was very close to city center. And my earliest memories are of the Willamette. Plus, when we look at it, it is the most important river in Oregon. And it goes through our city capital and through our largest city. 
The river is 187 miles long. I uh, started three miles south of Eugene. The first three miles of the river is so shallow it's unswimmable, plus there are a couple obsolete uh, old dams and weirs that have even sucked canoes under. And I was sure that other people would try to break my record once I set it. And I didn't want to be responsible for anybody dying. Uh, so I started at Alton Baker Park in Eugene. And that was 184 miles, 184.7 miles of swimming and ended up in the Columbia. I would start every day at about eight or nine and swim to about four or five. And usually in that time, I swam 10 to 12 miles a day. The hardest part was uh, the first week and a half. The water temperature in 2014 was in the mid to low 40s. And even wearing a three mil wetsuit, I'd go into severe hypothermia at about an hour. So every hour I had to get out and walk and do jumping jacks uh, just to keep what they call the deep core throttle. And so that, that was really the biggest challenge. And uh, it was also the greatest blessing too because uh, oncologists now think that it was maybe that hypothermia for 22 days that helped heal my cancer. I was fearful that it was such an overpowering type of dream that we would start and see how far we could go. And we took it a day at a time, but what impressed me is that it was cold, the water was cold, and I would uh, give him a break and pull him ashore and give him hot tea. And, uh, and I look at him and I thought, he'll never get in the water again because it's too cold. The boaters were very respective and I had the flag out, so allowing them to know that there was a swimmer in the water. And whenever we came on shore, uh, of course, they were interested in who this guy was that just came out of the water without a boat. When I decided to swim the Willamette, I was doing it to inspire other cancer patients to refuse to give up just because they'd received a diagnosis of cancer. And uh, I wanted to show them that you don't have to give up on your dreams and, and absolutely should not give up on your dreams simply because you received a diagnosis. That's all I was trying to do. I had no idea what I was in for. Uh, spending every day, all day in the river, I learned so much. Not only about uh, water, uh, but uh, as silly as it sounds, as cliche as it sounds, how to go with the flow. I realized that swimming the river, water never fights anything. And I'd been fighting things my whole life. Uh, fighting my stress, fighting my bills. And people even tell you to fight cancer. Uh, I realize that water never fights anything. It doesn't waste its energy. It just moves around it. it. It encounters an obstacle and it flows around it. And so I've tried to adopt that as a lifestyle and it's helped me in so many ways. Nature has the way of bringing what's wounded or undone out of you. It, it just pulls it out of you like a splinter. Whatever's there, if you spend time connecting with nature, it has the power to pull that kind of uh, hurt, those kinds of wounds right out of you. And that's what the river did for me. I walked in uh, July 2nd, 2014. I couldn't even say my wife's name without crying. I walked out, uh, it was June 2nd. I walked out uh, June 27th and uh, a changed man. I talked to Travis Williams, uh, the head of Willamette River Keepers, and uh, I told him that from now on I'm calling uh, the Willamette my river. 
And he said, I have every right to because I probably spent more time in it than anyone else. From Eugene uh, to about Salem, it's wild and free and beautiful. We saw eagles uh, very often. Uh, we saw deer, we saw beaver. We saw all sorts of wildlife and living and beautiful. I think it's one of our state's greatest treasures. And it, it makes me sad that Oregonians don't know it. From Eugene, where we started, to Albany, we only saw four other people in the river. We didn't see anyone, all day long, usually. It was Dean and myself uh, out there uh, coming down the river and doing the best we could and my wife doing the car shuttles between uh, boat ramps. And uh, we had an absolute marvelous time uh, just exploring nature and challenging each other and having a real deep commitment to each other. For me, uh, the river is very symbolic. Uh, it, it not only was moving my body, but it was moving my heart. And as it moved my heart, it moved my life toward healing. My goal really was, at the time I was working with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society to raise money for cancer research. But my biggest goal was to not just have it be about me. I'm really proud of him. He's done a lot of things in his life, but this was the craziest, most far out type of uh, stretch of energy and imagination that he's ever dreamed of. And, uh, and he sucked me into it uh, just by the back door. Being in the kayak that long, uh, I was sitting down. And you don't have to go through a lot of stress or strains uh, sitting in a kayak because you can always paddle faster than Dean can swim. Several times going through rapids, we uh, were sort of concerned, but I was mainly not concerned about Dean. I uh, was very selfish and I didn't worry about him because he was floating along and thinking he's Superman, watching the rocks go by so fast under his eyes. The reason I think no one's ever swum the length of the Willamette River is uh, back in the 60s and 70s, it was so polluted, particularly around downtown Portland. The pollution of the Willamette River has uh, increased in the cleansing of the river through the, the river watchers and uh, uh, the people that have really uh, gone to those companies that were polluting the river and got uh, either lawsuits or talking to them and negotiating, uh, cleaning up our river. And it's our river as people in Oregon. And uh, we own the river and it should be uh, cleaned up so people can swim and utilize it for recreation and uh, improve the environment. One day, I was just looking on the internet and I ran across a quote by Albert Einstein. It says, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as if nothing is a miracle. The other is as if everything's a miracle. It's not too hard to start believing in miracles, even when you're just looking about at the scientific facts of what is happening in the average human body every day. And so, once I started looking for miracles, I found that I was surrounded by them every moment of every day, so much so that I'm swimming in them. And so swimming in miracles is how I try to approach my life. And honestly, I think it's the most uh, factual, logical way to approach life. What you look for is what, how you live. And when I look for miracles, when any of us look for miracles, we start seeing them all around us every moment, every day. One of the greatest things that happened 
with uh, the 22 days on my river, <laughs> my river, um, is that uh, uh, the first blood test I took after uh, shocked my doctors and myself. The leukemia was gone without chemo or radiation by doing this crazy thing. And they still don't know why. I do, it was a miracle. Uh, but the lymphoma was stubborn. As a matter of fact, it was getting worse. And over in Japan, they found that, uh, they call it forest bathing. When you spend time in large forests, it boosts the immune system. So in 2015, because the lymphoma was getting worse and they wanted me to do chemo, I started going and spending one whole night, every Thursday night and Friday morning, out in the Mount Hood wilderness. And I started that in May of 2015. By March of 2016, my lymphoma was gone. Dean and I uh, uh, love cancer, I guess, because it loves us or something. But uh, I had leukemia and went through uh, chemotherapy in 2003. And uh, I decided that again, with the support of the family and the church and everything else, that I wasn't going to uh, let that bother me and do the most I can to live. One of my main messages is uh, don't fight anything. Don't fight cancer. Cancer is not a battle. Cancer is a disease. And the disease might be there because you've been fighting like I was everything your whole life long. Live in such a way that you love so much that even if you don't live through your cancer, you've made the most of every day. I don't like to be called a cancer survivor because I don't feel like I'm surviving at all. I feel like I am thriving. As a matter of fact, I don't call myself a cancer survivor. I call myself a cancer adventurer. I'm extremely thankful that I lived long enough and was able to have the determination and the desire to fulfill this dream.